A reading from the first book of Kings. I have sent to all the children of Israel and had the prophets assemble on Mount Carmel. Elijah appealed to all the people and said, How long will you straddle the issue? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. The people, however, did not answer him. So Elijah said to the people, I am the only one surviving prophet of the Lord, and there are 450 prophets of Baal. Give us two young bulls. Let them choose one. Cut it into pieces and place it on the wood, but start no fire. I shall prepare the other and place it on the wood, but shall start no fire. You shall call on your gods, and I will call on the Lord. The God who answers with fire is God. All the people agreed. Elijah then said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one young bull and prepare it first, for there are more of you. Call upon your gods, but do not start the fire. Taking the young bull that was turned over to them, they prepared it and called on Ba from morning to noon, saying, Answer us, Ba. But there was no sound, and there was no one answering. And they hoped around the altar that they had prepared. When it was noon, Elijah taunted them, Call louder, for he is a God and may be meditating or may have retired, or may be on a journey. Perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. They called out ladder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, and was their custom, until blood gushed over them. Noon passed, and they remained in a prophetic state until the time for offering sacrifice. But there was no sound. No one answered and no one was listening. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come here to me. When the people had done so, he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been destroyed. He took 12 stones for the number of tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the Lord had said, Your name shall be Israel. He built an altar in honor of the Lord with a stone, and made a trench around the altar, large enough for two measures of grain. When he had arranged the wood, he cut up the young bull and laid it on the wood. Fill four jars with water, he said, and pour it over the burnt offering and over the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he said, and they did it a third time. The water flowed around the altar, and the trench was filled with, with water. At the time for offering sacrifice, the prophet Elijah came forward and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and have done all these things by your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me, that these people may know that you, Lord, are God, and that you have brought them back to their senses. The Lord's fire came down and consumed the burnt offering, wood, stones, and dust, and it lapped the water in the trench. Seeing this, all the people fell prostrate and said, The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The word of the Lord. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, you are. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. They multiply their sorrows who caught other gods. Blood libations to them, 
I will not pour out, nor will I take their names upon my lips. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. O Lord, my allotted portion and cup, you it is who, who hold fast my lot. I set the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joy in your presence, the delight at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God. Hallelujah, me wo fa you. Hallelujah, me wo fa Hallelujah, hallelujah, me wo fa you. Teach me your path, my God, and guide me in your truth. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen. I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. So the other day was also a conversation between two quite elderly men, and one asked the other. The way you've lived your life till now, will you be happy if your son should live the way you lived? And he said, no. If he had the opportunity, there were things in his life that he was going to correct. That's very important. In gospel reading, Jesus was very clear that the way you want to live your life, live it in such a way that you have some legacy that others can look on. And that's why I talk about little ones. He put that challenge to his disciples. That not even a little piece of the law of God will be done away with. Now, what is this law? Fundamentally, we know that it has to do with love of God and love of neighbor. So you have that horizontal relationship that we have with each other and the vertical one we have with God. And the deeper and richer our relationship with God, so will be the deeper and richer our relationship with one another. And it is on the basis of that that we can pass on something credible, richer, and of a higher quality to people that we engage, not only with our children, not with our family members, but in every aspect, in every area of society in which we find ourselves. And so 
the gospel reading we have heard is basically about how do you want to live in such a way that you will pass on something to people who look up to you. People look up to us, not only as Christians, maybe in our families, in our workplaces, in our communities, people look up to us. What do you want to pass on? Such that these little ones, and that is figuratively said, means that it has to do with anybody who looks up to you. What do you want to pass on? I think this is something we need to reflect on. That as we gravitate daily in our Christian journey, we are living in such a way that we can pass something that is of a higher quality to people and that they can remember us for as good Christians. Let us rise and bring our needs and intentions to the Lord. Let us pray for our leaders in the church that, like Elijah, they may faithfully do everything at God's command, rebuilding his altars and bringing his people back to him by their powerful witness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may no longer struggle the moral issues of our day, but acknowledge the Lord as our God and stand up for his commandments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we offer ourselves upon this altar and take part in his holy sacrifice, God's merciful fire may consume our gifts as an acceptable holocaust for his glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are passing through a time of sickness, financial difficulty, and distress of heart or mind, that God may answer our fervent prayers on their behalf as he once answered and responded to his holy prophet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dear ones who have gone before us, that the Lord may show them the path to life and the delight of his right hand forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's bring our individual needs and intentions to the Lord. God of all goodness, we thank you for the grace to bring our needs and intentions to you this morning. We ask that you may grant them according to your will for us, and we make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. 